Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Je Jesus is Lord Ministries outside of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's great to be back behind the pulpit on a Wednesday morning. Um, and my name is Rick, for those that don't know me. So um, let's just jump right into the Word. <laughs> We're running a little bit late today, but that's all good. We, we showed up to do God's will, so sometimes... You know, it's in God's timing anyway, so we're always striving to, you know, hit the mark and, and, and all these things. But as long as we're in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, uh, God will take care of everything. So um, the, uh, the title of today's message is The Narrow Path. And it's cool because I sit, you know, I preach once a week on a Wednesday morning. And, uh, and in between, you know, preparing a message, I'll, I, I had this, this nice comfortable chair in the sunroom, and I just prayed the Lord. I said, what would you like me to speak on? And it will give me a title. Uh, last, uh, last week, it was just one word, one word forgiveness. This, this time, he, uh, this, this go around, he gave me the, uh, the title, The Narrow Path. So I, you know, I jotted it down, and I ran with it, and uh, I subtitled it, The Path to Righteousness. And as we read scriptures, you'll see why I went that way, because it, it, the narrow path is the path to righteousness. So um, let's uh, open in prayer as usual, and we'll get the service started today, guys. Father, I pray you give us the power and the strength to surrender our will to the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit that will lead us on the path to righteousness. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started here. I'm, I, I get excited when I got I'm so blessed to have this opportunity. And it's just it's it's fun for me to get behind this pulpit and preach the word of God. So um, and, and um, there's a reason for everything. And, it's, and it'll be revealed even it's this is I feel is a calling on my life. But we all have a calling. And let's see if we can get somewhere today on that that and and get ourselves started on that narrow path and um we're going to start out in the book of psalms chapter 23 and we're going to read one through six the lord is my shepherd and catches i'm going to go through the verses one through six and then if it's okay i'd like to go back and 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 study out a couple of the, the verses where we get started and um let's make sure we get off to a, a good start here this morning and this is a, uh, if you've gone to church or uh, at any time, you've probably heard this. But again, like I said last week, let's just not go through the motions and through the words and not really uh, study it out and get it in our hearts. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, which to me is entering into heaven, eternity with the Lord. So, like I said, let's go through this a little bit. I jotted down some notes, so I won't go through every verse that we just went through, but let's, let's get, uh, let's understand exactly what this verse says. Like I said, a lot of us are familiar with this, and it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd, the, and um. And that's because he, if we're, if he is our shepherd and our heavenly father, just as a shepherd will lead a flock of sheep and leads them and guides them and protects them, our heavenly father does the same thing. And that's what he says, um, you know, the Lord is my shepherd or our father, our guiding father, and he guides us and protects us. That's what that means when it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. And when it says after that, I shall not want... What that means is we should be in lack of nothing, guys. God has provides everything for us, so that's what that means. When He said, "We," sh when it says, "I sh I shall want, I shall not want." And then in verse two, He said, "He makes me to lie down in green pastures." And and I studied that out a little bit, and um, what that means is that's that 
actually means that he provides a place of spiritual and physical rest. That because when a shepherd when when a shepherd is over the sheep, he he leads that shepherd will lead them into green pastures. That's where they lie down and rest. And then that's so cool the way the Bible and the Lord has spoke to the 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 people the writers of this Bible spiritually to put these words down because but we have to know what they mean when it says, you know, he gives us a place like, uh, like to lie down in green pastures. And that, like I said, that's, that's the, uh, a spiritual place of rest and a physical place of rest. And then it, when he talks about he leads me beside the still waters. And, and in Hebrew, still waters means restful water or refreshment. So I, I, I found that um, when I looked into that uh, as, a, as, a, as a meaning for still waters. And, and Jesus is that still water. He is the living water that gives us and it gives us life and restores our soul. So if you, if we won't go through any more, I got, I want to get, hit some other scriptures here. But this all the way to the end, um, he will be with me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's eternity there. It ne- for the house, ha- dwell in his house forever. But he leads us into it by by uh, surrendering our will to his will and accepting his his son Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He becomes our shepherd and our father. And that's what leads to verse six, or verse six in uh, um, Psalms 23, that that way you'll end up uh, in, in heaven or you'll dwell with him forever and in, in his house forever. Okay, guys, let's go move on into the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 7, we're going to start in verse 7 and read 7 through 14. Ask and, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And remember, we're, we're seeking this narrow path. And this is all the things that we should be aware of or think about as we're seeking that, that, that narrow path. Or what man is there among you who, if, he has, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give you good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and of and the prophets. Enter in by the narrow gate. And here it is. This is the start. Of where this, the first time in the scriptures we read today where it mentions narrow gate. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go into it. When it's saying there's many that will go into the wide and broad gate to destruction because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Guys, you don't want to be that person that's caught up in the world and the lust of the world and, and enter in, into that wide gate to, and broad path to destruction. You want to you be, like it's saying though, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way, you want to take that difficult way. And that only means it's just not the norm. It's that's not something your natural flesh wants to go after to try to discipline yourself to the will and the, and the word of God. You, you may be difficult until that transi- transition takes takes place and you you start your God will start transforming your mind and transforming you from the old old things pass away all things become new but it's he's he's saying it may not be an easy thing or easy journey for you but that's and that's why few will find it but you don't want to be that few that that you want to be the, you want to be a part of that few that find it and not that large majority that follow that easier path which is broad and wide to destruction be and okay I'll, I'll read verse 15 beware of the f- false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ra- ravages wolves you want to you that's why you want to get good doctrine good teachings and the best way to do it well go to a good bible teaching church but get 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 in the word yourself and god will meet you where you're at 
And that, and that way well, you won't be listening to things on social media and it's false news out there and being led in the darkness by uh, false prophets and all these things. That's, um, I mean, I'm living proof of it, guys. And I know I am, and I mentioned it before, I'm far from perfect. And, but I know one thing, I, I've learned what repentance means. It changed my ways when I do fall weak in the flesh. And, and stuff like that. You'll learn all these things once you get into the Word of God and, and, and you seek that narrow path that we, we, uh, that, which is the, the, the topic and, the, um, and what we're studying out today. Okay, let's move on to um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, 12 through 26. Okay, it goes like this. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, for what... For Forever, which is Jesus, set down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. It just means God is eventually every knee is going to bow to the name of Jesus, and that's what it's saying. Every knee, and, and that, and that's what he's saying when he said, "Waiting till his enemies are made his footstools." Whether you believe or not, you're going to answer to the word of God and to the and 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 and. Jesus could be Lord over all. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. That's us. We are the ones being sanctified. It doesn't say you're completely sanctified once you receive Jesus as your Lord, Lord and Savior, which is what I was talking about myself. I've changed so much in the last 10 plus years following Christ, but it's a process. It's a purging and, it, and, and I'm being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds. I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, there, now where there is a remission of these things, there is no longer an offering for sin. God, what Jesus did on that cross was the final sacrifice, the final blood sacrifice. We are not under the law. The law should be written on our hearts, but the only way... How are you going to know what that law is without getting into the Word and, get, and, and find yourself a good Bible teaching church? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living, this is the new and living way which he consecra consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. That, that, that veil is torn that separated us from the holies of holies, Christ himself. We, we, are, we are in his presence now. That's what it's saying because the, the, he, Jesus made that final sacrifice. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly. A lot of people now, not to pick on anybody, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> after the, this COVID thing, people stopped going to church and a lot of churches shut down and everything like that. And now people, a lot of people <coughs> decided they don't need to really go back to church, but it's saying, or a corporate gather, but he, he's saying right now, right now, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, as it is the manner of some, which is talking about this, the latest round of that would be this COVID thing where people stop going to church and think it's okay to sit and watch um, teachings on and preaching online, which is fine, but it's saying, he's saying corporate gather. Don't forsake that. <clears throat> and so much more as you see the day approaching. We should be gathering more since we see the day approaching, not less. And saying it right in the Bible. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there are no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. It's back to that narrow path. He said it's going to be difficult. 
you know, there's going to be some difficulty staying on that narrow path and finding that narrow path. That, but you, you press on and you, you seek God in the midst of your trials. And that's what he's, that's the sacrifice he's talking about. <clears throat> I mean, look at the sacrifice Jesus made and our Heavenly Father's Son made, talking about a sacrifice, it, and His Spirit entered into us. He should give us that, that power to be able to, to, to go through, uh, to sacrifice, uh, and just to stay on that narrow path, which is what we're uh, learning today. Okay, let's move on um, to 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to um, read 1 through 11. <clears throat> Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. I was just talking about what Jesus did for us at that cross. And, and, and I'm going to read that again. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. That's that sacrifice for the lust of men, the things that, that the world goes after and, and what your natural mind goes after. Chapter 4, verse 3. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime, and I'm a living example. I had spent enough of my lifetime in what? In doing the will of the Gentiles or doing, doing the will of the world. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, tr drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And I did all these things, guys. And I, and I am not too pride, I'm not too prideful not to admit it. It's been over 10 years, but I'm not a hypocrite either. I don't make, I don't look at myself better than anyone. I've walked in all these things it just talked about in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, and drinking parties and all these things. So, but it, see, we, we think we can hide things from the Lord. Even some of us Christians, maybe uh, there's guys, there's people out there that think it's okay to, you know, drink alcohol and all these things and party a little bit, and, you know, as long as you show up for church and read your Bible. It, it, and I'm not picking on anybody. Please don't take me wrong. I'm just mentioning things that still that's worldly. No matter if you feel like you can handle a couple beers and stop after one or two or three or four or six pack, whatever it is, because I had an alcohol problem, so that's why I use that for an example. But he's saying, you know, you spent enough time doing these things, and I certainly did. I spent a good portion of my life caught up in these things. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them and the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. And I'm sure all the guys I used to run with and go to the Eagles Club in Littlestown and drink beer and carry it on like a fool. And I'm sure there was somebody that probably maybe spoke maybe in a negative way about me and, you know, Rick some, become some Jesus freak and all that. And, and, and by the way, I'll take that as a compliment. And uh, anyway, verse 5, they will give an account to him who, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Everybody, if you're a child of God, and you have people coming against you, they're going to answer to that one day. You don't look at them in that way like, well, you can call me what you want or look at me like you want, but you're going to, you're going to be judged by God one day. You don't look at it, think that way so much, but the Bible's saying people that come against, you know, uh, believers in Christ, they're going to be judged for that one day is, is what it's saying. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, and they might be judged according to, the, to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. That's what we should be doing, living for God in the Spirit. But in the end of all things is at hand. I'm going to read that again, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Guys, it's just re reminding us, what, and which I talked about, a little bit last week is we are in the end times what else i think all the prophecies have been filled and and things like that right down to the wars and rumors of wars and and the and the and the war in the middle east between iran and all the proxies against um israel and all these things this is all prophesized in the bible so what are we looking for we're actually looking for the rapture of, of the church the church the, you know, the children of God is the, next, the final prophecy, I believe, that needs to take place. 
And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover, cover a multitude of sin. And just like I was just talking about the people that may come against you and even talk about you, the people you used to party and, and get, you know, and they talked about being, um, dr you know, drunk drunkard and all these things, you know, um, but you love on these people and pray for these people and they receive Christ. It, it's saying it covers a multitude of sin. Be hospitable to, do, to the, uh, one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister, to it, minister it to one another as good stewards of a manifold grace of God. I've received the gift guys of speaking the word of God behind a pulpit like this man I gotta I gotta take that serious and I've got to um, be a good steward of that and that's why I'm here today to this is just my way of spreading the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ as and I'll read that again as each one has received a gift as each one, not just Rick over here, I'm talking about there's each one of us has a, some gift or gifting that we need to, to honor and glorify God. That's what you got to find out and seek out in your own life. No matter if you're 10 or 100, whatever, the, you have a gift and because it, it's saying it right here in the Bible. And you've got to be a good steward of that gift. And if, remember, it's all for the glory of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. And that would be me all over the place. And I, and I knew I, I'm not the best speaker, and I lose my place sometimes. I struggle a little bit keeping on, on track and all these things. But, you know, that's okay. He's saying you... You do this with the ability that God supplies. It's the Lord anyway. Guys, if it was up to me, I'd probably be home and garage wrenching on a hot rod or something like that and or sitting out in the front porch with a cup of coffee with my dog. I, I'm just saying, you. it's like surrendering your will to the Father's will, and that's what gets me out here on a Wednesday morning to preach like this. It, it's just... It's all for His glory. It's not to lift myself up. And I'm a, I, I'm, I hope I'm not bringing myself up too much, but I like to try to keep this as real as possible when I get behind this pulpit because I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of church itself. And you hear a lot, well, I used to go to church, but, uh, you know, I just didn't have a good experience. You're just a bunch of hypocrites. And you got to let that stuff go. And guess what? We all, we all have issues that need to be addressed. That's why you should go to church. Don't stay away because you see other people's issues. You go to this, you go to church and maybe there's some, you could have just some words spoken to that person and you could share some things that make you say, say you feel like I don't want to go to church because there's, the, it's nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Well, then you go to that church and maybe you can make a difference if, if that's the experience you've had and um, stuff like that. So, okay, let's move on to Second Peter. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me I'm lose the track in like I just told you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Second Peter, chapter one and, and read one through twenty one. That, that, that's um, I always like. Well, I, I like first and second Peter, but we can I think we can walk away with something today. And this to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. When it says to those, he's just speaking directly to us, to those who have ob obtained like precious faith. Our faith is precious, man. It, it, you can't, if you see things in the world and worldly things, you're going to frustrate yourself because, you know, you're going to go after, say, material things like cars. I collect old hot rods and stuff like that and I'll use that for an example and I find myself never being satisfied. My favorite car today is the my favorite car of all times until the next favorite car comes along if you know what I mean. You this material things is it, what I'm saying is you're never going to be filled your your that void in your life's never going to be filled by material things like cars and stuff like that you you want to seek faith the only thing that's going to fill that void and and it is just a precious faith that faith that that we that that gives 
people like me and other Christian people, this unction, this drive to, to get out and spread the gospel like I'm trying to do behind this pulpit this morning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, we want that. We want grace and peace to be multiplied to us. And it's saying, I mean, it's possible and you and and multiplied in the knowledge of God, the knowledge of what these words are saying. I want that. I, I it it would so help me to get behind this pulpit and preach with clarity and understanding and simplicity. If I get that, if I get that uh, grace and peace multiplied to me and the knowledge of God multiplied to me, and that's what all this stuff's in the Bible, guys. You just seek, go after it, and you and you'll find yourself starting out on the milk say of the gospel but you're going to find yourself in the meat of the gospel one day and just and and being able to teach a sunday school class or speak to some somebody of even a family member or even a stranger about this this awesome god that that we serve uh that we're in second peter chap, uh, chapter one verse three as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory of his virtue that's it god i talk, guys i talked about it last week there's a calling you know that he has called us by glory and 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 by uh, called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these things you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust you're going to escape this lust the first thing people think of when they hear the word lust is sexual things, but man, no, lust could be the lust for money, the lust for material, the material things, the lust for fame, all these things, man, you, you want to escape that. That's corruption. That's not going to lead you into that narrow path of righteousness. You're, you're going to end up on that broad path to destruction. That, that's what this is talking about. But also for this very reason, give, giving all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly love, and to brotherly kindness also. This is the things we should be seeking. I mean, wouldn't you like to have all these beautiful things? I mean, and it's available, but it's only available for you seeking God. Seek Seek that narrow path of righteousness. One step at a time, if you've never been in a church before or never picked up that Bible, that's just, that's fine. I mean, this, this, the Great Commission is to spread the gospel to all the nations, to all people. So, so that's saying everybody hasn't heard. Well, if you hear in this message today and it's got your attention, you know, then that that's what this is all about. You, and you're going to be so blessed by it. Um, guys, I've told you before, I barely made it through high school, much less to be a public speaker or a teacher of any kind. I started out in, in, as a Sunday school teacher years ago, 10 years or so ago, and my wife and I, and, and it, it led me from there into ministering to some adult classes. And I preached in a church in Africa. And I'm not saying this pridefully, I'm just saying the things that happened and this guy that barely made it through high school and I had to go to summer school in my senior year to get my diploma and all these things. And trust me, I'm not putting myself down or belittling myself. I'm just telling you the reality of a before and after the, the old things have passed away, the old Rick have passed away and all things become new and God has opened up a whole new life for me and and I still have the interest I used to in hot rides and motorcycles and antiques gas pumps and all these kind of things I'm not saying that he totally uh, transforming into this this strange being that um that nobody would recognize me no it, it's just that he can he can take this person meet you where you're at and open up doors for you to do things great things in this life and that's what this is about this word of god is just opening up a spiritual world to you i think it's a good way to put it um okay we're going to move on 
to, okay, or we're in Second Peter ch chapter 1, verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about. Opening up a, a, a part of your life, a spiritual part of your life, that is the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. That means if you were walking with the Lord and you forget these things that we just went through, to be d diligent in, in, in the knowledge of God, self-control, perseverance, and godliness, and all these things. If you forget these things and you stop practicing these things, then you, it's saying that, that, he, that you, you're, you're, you need to be cleansed from that, is basically what he's saying. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. What he's saying, just... You, you be diligent and to seek God and stay in His Word and, 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 and show up for church. And I don't, I don't want to keep bringing up church, but it's a good thing, guys. I mean, a lot of us, and I, I, I live that life. Well, you know, you, say you work all week. Now I'm retired now, but say you work all week and, and you, you, have, you have your weekend and Sunday morning rolls around. You're thinking, man, I need a day off. I mowed the grass Saturday or whatever and do all your chores and stuff like that and, and the wife shops. And, but no, you, you, so you can talk yourself out of just going to church. So that's why I'm bringing it up. You know, when, it, it's funny because if you, you're staying away from a place on a Sunday morning that could really give you more enthusiasm and, and, and clear your mind of the worldly things and open up a, 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 a spiritual world for you. So it's a, it, you'll be blessed by it is what I'm saying. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. It'll help you from falling uh, weak into the flesh. For, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, you're, if you're diligent and, you, and you're serious and you keep seeking that kingdom, the, he's talking about entering into heaven to me. If you read that and you really see what he's saying there, an everlasting kingdom would be the, the, the kingdom of heaven. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and though you know and are established in the present truth. But see, he's, Paul's reminding the people, the followers, the people that believe in Christ, reminding of these things. That way, you you're you, you know, because. Even me, I'm 70 years old. And I'm not going to be here forever. And Paul will talk about that. So why I'm here, I'm going to remind you, even believers and Christians and, and people that do go to church, of what, you know, to stay on that narrow path. Don't, don't backslide. Don't stop going to church because, you, you know, you stopped around this COVID three or four years ago, whatever it was, and, and th these kind of things. You know, and I have a, a opportunity to speak behind a pulpit that and I'm going to put it out there not to to condemn anyway, but maybe to bring some conviction on all of us, including myself, to just seek God in a, more diligently and stay on that narrow path. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent or in this body is what he's saying to stir you up by the by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as for the Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. And I'm not picking out my coffee, but guys... 70 years old, and I'm not a young man anymore. So I'm looking at, say I live to be 100, I, I, whatever. But, um, you know, if, if it's 1 to 100, I've, taken, I've already lived up to 70 years. So what I'm saying, I'm not going to be here forever. None of us will be. There's a beginning and there's also an end. So guys, that you know, the elders of the church and the older gentlemen and women that get behind a pulpit, we got to, preach things as a reminder of these things now you, and if, especially to a younger person that can pass these things on it's almost like the that's it's like a love in our hearts to spread this gospel and remember that love will call, call, cover a multitude of sins 
For, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Talking about eyewitnesses, the disciples had seen Jesus and walked with him, seeing, seeing him cast out demons, uh, heal the sick and raise the dead and all these things. Eyewitnesses. Even Paul before, now he, he was like knocked off his high horse and blinded for three days and that was his that's what made him an eyewitness of the power of God and and the and the and this this the and the and the G, and God's God the Father Son Jesus for he received from God the Father honor and glory when he such a voice came to him from the excellent glory excellent glory this is my beloved son who I am well pleased Paul heard these things the disciples heard these things you know and, and that that made them witnesses but guys i feel like i'm a witness to the power and the resurrection of christ because you gotta you would have to explain to me what it, what happened to you rick at one time in your life the people that know me and used to that used to party i used to party with and stuff like like that what happened to this guy you know like and that's kind of, but I can say this, well, I met Christ, you know, I, I surrendered my life to him. I, I became, old things passed away, all things became new. Now I'm a witness to that. And we heard this voice, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirm, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but the, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So this, what this is basically saying, all these words, these prophetic words, this, this history of, of how this world began from the beginning in Genesis when God spoke light and then there was light and, and, and separated the waters from the dry land and all these things to the very end in Revelation when it talks about the, the wrath of God being poured out on the people that haven't accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. This is all... This is not for pr private interpretation or learning. This, this, is for, this should be for all the world to hear. That's the gospel. We're, everybody on this planet that's living and breathing needs to hear this, 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 this word, this, this holy Bible. So, um, okay, guys, I'm running out, I've run out of time here. So let, just let me do real, something real quick that I always do, and it's so important to me. And I feel the Lord wants me to share the, the, the salvation message or the sinner's prayer. Because like I said before, even, even if this will encourage you, say you have your, your salvation and you feel secure in it and stuff like that. But it, what we need to be doing is be a part of that great commission and go out into all the world and spread that gospel or that good news of, of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And basically, if you want to help someone, and you don't even have to do it. You can do a repeat after me if you'd like and get online and find a sinner's prayer and it, whatever it takes for you to reach someone. But basically, it, when, you, when you're sharing your faith or the, or the saving knowledge of Jesus to someone, just make it as simple as you can and have that person understand that they have sin in their life. And if they can understand that, that they have done, done wrong in their life and admit they have sinned, then they're just basically saying, okay, that I am a sinner. So first you got to understand you are a sinner. And with, it, with any sin, you can't enter into heaven. And you have to make this person understand that. But so the only way and the only one and true way is to believe that God the Father, our Creator, sent His Son Jesus to die for your sins, shed His blood once and for all for your sins. And you got to believe these things in your heart. And if you're talking to somebody with the sincerity of your heart, they'll see it in you. It could even be a stranger, but especially a friend or a family member or, you know, uh, or someone in your household. 
And you can say, just confess with your mouth in a quiet place. Or you could share, they could, you could kind of do a, a, a walk them through it, or not necessarily re repeat after me, that just confess with your mouth, Lord, I know I have sinned, and I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. And, um, and, I, and I believe in my heart that I am saved, and I thank you, Lord, for saving me. And, and I believe that you raised your son Jesus from the dead, I'm just putting it out there different ways each time I speak because it's going to touch someone. And because you know, you've got to know someone that, that, um, that isn't walking with Christ and, and they need their sins forgiven. And um, so, so important, guys. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed today's message and, and I'll be seeing you guys next Wednesday. God bless.